and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. So today I'm going to try and wrap up the um, Sudoku Grand Prix that I've been attempting against the clock and my times are here. So there were 15 puzzles in total in the Grand Prix test and as I've explained before, um, to achieve, you, you get 90 minutes if you set the test um, online um, in which you have to submit your answers as well. So practically you get about 87 minutes. Um, my time so far is just going over two hours now. Um, so I'm 30 minutes over with one puzzle left to go. The hardest puzzle according to the points grading. So this one should take the experts about 13 or 14 minutes. I'm possibly a grade below world expert, but you know, I'm pretty, I'm decent for my country. <laughs> Not maybe in world times. There will be about a, two dozen people who finish this test in the time all correctly. And I mean, hats off to them. I've found it extremely difficult. So the final puzzle is called Sum by X. And in this puzzle, um, this is very unusual instructions. I'm used to um, a form of this in which... The numbers outside the grid here represent, for each column or row they appear in, starting from the end of that row or column where they appear, a sum of digits. How many digits? The number that appears in the grey cell. So in this grey cell here, relevant to this 30, whatever number that is, the first, let's say that's a 7, the first seven digits in this row add up to 30. So over here, the first whatever number this is in this row add up to 22. Um, there's only one given, as you can see in the center of the puzzle. All the um, clues are around the outside three rows and columns from each direction. Um, I haven't seen a puzzle of this sort before. As I say, there's a variant where the number outside the grid gives you the sum of the number of digits in that column according to the first cell. But this time the cells are gray. Um, it's a peculiar idea in some ways, and here's my solve of it starting now. So first of all, I'm just looking at this going, well, where do I start? I don't even know how to get going. And then I realize, I think, that if you add together the two clues for a row or column, there must be some sort of overlap or, or underlap or whatever that is, or, or gap. So these two in row three, they add together to give 46. Now that must mean that there's a shared one in the middle somewhere. The 15 has to be at least two cells. And in fact, for the 21 above, this, this gray cell has to be at least three because 21 can only be made up of a minimum of three digits. But in this row, um, the 15 can only be a maximum of five digits. Five, four, three, two, one add up to 15. So this number is constrained between three, four, and five. So actually that's what I'm doing to start with, um, is spotting where there are constraints. So 18 needs to be made up of three digits. 13 can't be more than Actually, it can't be more than four. I could have limited that to three and four straight away. Might have made a small mistake there, but not a costly one. So I'm trying to limit down what the gray cells can be. Again here, 21, the maximum is six. For 18, actually the maximum is five. So again, that could have been four or five. Um, why couldn't that be three in that cell? because one of them would then be a three and you'd have two nines to go with it and that is impossible. So the cell itself has some play in this and what I'm doing first of all is going around looking at the combined clues for each gray cell and seeing how that limits them. So in this cell up here 29 could be any number between four and seven the 22 could be 4 to 6. I don't think that could be a 7. Because seven, digit, 7 different digits must always make more than 22. 
Um, so that's what I'm doing to start with and then seeing if I get any pure kind of matches between the two gray cells in each row or column. But as I say, the, the useful thing to notice, this row three, 31 and 15 add up to 46. Now, for a sum of digits from the right and a sum of digits from the left to add up to 46, when we know that one to nine add up to 45, there must be an overlap of n the number one. So if, if this is a five, this must be a five, and one must be in the middle. And that would actually be very useful. In fact, that's not even possible, because if there was a one in a five-digit sum adding up to 31, the others would have to be nine, eight, seven, six. They couldn't include that five. So in fact, this will be six or seven. This will be four or three. And I think we've worked out from the 21 that it can't be three. So up here, for instance, that must be six and this must be four. And you even know that where they overlap here must be the one. Um, so there are ways to make progress with what seems like a completely intractable puzzle at first. But I think we'll be watching for a little while before we see me make significant progress during this solve. I'm still kind of studying how can you get going at all. Now that 46, which adds to 1, may be the most useful place to start. And I don't remember seeing that immediately when I did spot this way of going. But here down the bottom, you've got 32 and 18, 50. So they overlap by digits adding to 5, which is either going to be a 5 or a 1 and 4 or 2 and 3. If it's a 5, it can't be in the middle, interestingly. So these couldn't both be five digits long. Well, that would give fives everywhere, actually, so that's nonsense. But if it was, say, a two and a three in these two cells, then you could have a five here and a six here, and that would work fine. But there are various other possibilities, so it is quite hard to limit things early on. Now, I have at least managed to limit all the gray cells to something here. But I'm certainly going to need to come up with some other breakthrough. And now I think I've figured out that this 15 is more limiting. Ah, oh, in fact, the 21 is more limiting than I'd realized. That couldn't be a 3. Because to add up for the first three digits to add up to 21, they can't include a 3. So that had to be 4 or 5. Since this was 4 or 5, this 4, 5, 6 got reduced to the only possibility left, which is a 6. So at least that's a start. And that's beginning to eliminate a few other things. In fact, I could take the 6 out of this box down at the bottom now if I notice that it's there. Um, and in fact, this column becomes quite useful, I think. It adds up to 48. The overlap is 3. This cell at the bottom can only be a 5 or a 4 now. If it's a 4, we would have a 3 in this cell. If it's a 5, we'd have a 2 and a 1 in this cell. So, oh, okay, I've managed to get this, um, this cell as a 5. And in fact, because the sum of this column is 57, the overlap can't be just one square, one cell. So... 57 is 12 more than the sum of 45. So there's got to be an overlap adding up to 12. That can't be done in one cell. So this has to be high enough um, for this column to have an overlap of two cells. And it has to therefore be at least six. So I've been able to fill in a six. Now I am working now on the overlap here. As I pointed out, the overlap in the bottom row has to, has to sum to five. So it's either five in this cell. Actually, if I thought about it, I could work out that, no, no, that is possible. Five in this cell is possible. You could have six here and four there. Or these two could be two and three, adding up to five. Um, if this was a four, if this was a five, actually they could be four and one as well in that case, I think. So that might be a false conclusion unless I'm missing something else, but I think that's right. But again, still gradually just looking for somewhere to get some purchase. 
And I think I'm beginning to now notice the overlaps. Now, this row eight, this is a good one. 16 plus 31 is 47. Now, that overlap of two can only be fulfilled in one cell. And I've worked out it must either be in cell three or cell four in that row. So I'm beginning to get the idea now of what to do with the overlaps. Yeah, I've worked out the overlap in this column is 12 in these two cells. And that can't be five, seven because of the five used there. I don't know whether it's three, nine or four, eight, but I'm just beginning to get a little bit of idea of what to do in the rest of the grid. Now, some of the cell, some of the rows don't add up to more than 45. So for instance, this row seven that I'm pointing to adds up to 37. So the two numbers must add up to less than nine and the two cells in between the runs of digits must, or the one or two cells must add up to eight. Could even be three cells, but I don't think that's possible. So I'm still, during the live solve, just looking for what to do now, searching around the grid in, in the hope of some form of inspiration. Um, it does get going at some point, I know that, but let's see where we get to next. Just looking at the top, this, this second row adds up to 39. So there's got to be a six in the gap in the middle between the two runs of cells. This 25 could be four. I mean, to be honest, you could almost go on probability. It's much more likely the 25 is made up in five cells and the 15 in four. But you can't, I think, be certain about that at this stage. If you can, it's by a way I haven't thought of. So now I've worked out that there's six of an overlap and one of these is a four. So the six is either made up of a single six in cell four or five or a five and a one. That's limited down my possibilities here. And finally, I've been able to work out that row three must be a six here and a four here, giving a one in the middle as we worked, as I kind of talked you through earlier on. Now that limits this five here. Still not absolutely certain whether this is a three or a four, although in fact, since I've now ruled out one and five as a possibility for these, um, I think this actually has to be a three now. It can't be a four because there'd be no gap between the run of four and the run of five. So that should be a three. But I'm now working down here on where I've got some limitations placed on these cells. Um, not sure what I'm going to spot next. Yeah, this, up here, this has to be a three. And therefore, the six is in the gap between the three cells on the left and the five cells on the right. OK, so I've managed to limit this down to a three. I think I've worked out the um, issue that it couldn't be as much as a five or you'd get no gap in column nine. So three is the only possibility left. Now I've got the four up there. You add up those two, you've got six in between filling two cells. Can't be four, two because of the four. It must be five, one in these two cells and the five in the center determines which way round they are. Now that three's enabled me to get a five over here. Now I can look at column one, which sums to 51, but with a two cell overlap, so that must be two, four. Um, row seven here adds up to 37, and now that we know there's only a one cell gap, so that must be an eight. This is the one I could still figure out here. I've got a three and a four in column 14, uh, sorry, in column two. And they add up to 34, so that I know the central two cells make 11. And interestingly, they must occur in the middle box. They can't be two nine because one of these two is a four. And because we've got a three and a four here, they can't be three eight or four seven. So they must be six five. And I've been able to work out from these two fives where the five and six are placed. That's ensured I know what the three and the four are. And now I can finish off all the gray cells, which is at least a big step forward. Now, I mean, I'm some way into time spent solving this puzzle, but it's a difficult puzzle, as I'm sure you've found if you've tried it yourself. So now I'm going to be using the gray cells that I've established. Um, we can see that in this, or no, in fact, bit of ordinary Sudoku here, we've got enough fives in to start placing all the fives in the grid. So that could be useful. Um, and we mustn't forget, and I think I did forget for a while, 
that these totals aren't just providing gaps and overlaps, they're actually providing the totals of four cells in some cases. So here in column seven, this 21 at the bottom is made up of the first four cells. Since I've managed to get a three in there, it's very clear that those four cells which add to 21 need a nine in there. So it takes me a little while to spot that or to, in fact, to remember that these clues are valuable of themselves, not just paired up with their opposite numbers. So there's quite a lot of logic to go through in a puzzle like this. And you, you have to keep track of what things, what clues are telling you. Um, but once you do that, things get a lot easier. So up at the top here, for instance, if I'd noticed that 5 plus 3 plus 4 is 12, I need another 10 to go in to make up 22. That could be 2, 8 or 1, 9. Now, that's fairly open-ended. <coughs> um, but that sort of logic applies everywhere. So I've managed to start placing 3s. Um, and again, this 21 is very useful if I notice that now. This 27 is very useful. I know that this, these two in the overlap add up to 11. So with that 3 there now, I can see that that must be an 8 at the top. But as I say, I haven't kind of noticed that because I haven't gone back at this stage to working on what these original clues actually mean, which is annoying because that would have saved a lot of time here. This 15 here, I've got 4, 3 and a 1. It's got to be 8 there. So I shouldn't have needed to waste time putting in kind of Snyder notation 8s up here and along here. How long is it going to take me to notice that? This 13 here, 3 and another 10, well, that can't be 3, 7 or 6, 4 or 8, 2. So that would have to be 1 and 9 in some order. I think now I've noticed that. So... So that enables me to get going with... Um, the other cells in this box. And in fact, now I'm working on these numbers outside the grid. 18 must be 2 and a 7. That place is an 8 there. 31 means this has to add up to 12 in the central cells here. And suddenly everything can start to get filled in depending on which clues I've used outside the grid. Now, I think if I was solving in pencil, I'd be kind of crossing out the clues outside the grid once I'd known that I've used them. So for instance, it's useful to know that I haven't cracked this 24 yet. 5 plus 2, 9 plus 6, that's 20. Um, oh, that's 22. I've made a mistake here. I've suddenly realized something has gone wrong. And in the last few moves, I must have put something in wrong. So we're going back to checking. The 319 had to be right. But that 2, 9 couldn't be right because it would make the 5 impossible with the 24. So I've done something wrong in this box here, and I'm trying to work out what that is. Now, unwinding things that you've put in wrong is, is a vicious problem in Sudoku, but it sometimes needs to be done. And what I've decided to do is go up here where I haven't used these clues yet, and that's enabled me to work out that this box was all right. The 872 are entirely possible. So it's something, something's gone wrong in the bottom left corner, and hopefully I'll be able to fix it by coming at it from a different angle. So this 27 up here ensures that we've got an 8 at the top. Um, we'll have 1, 7 to put in there. That's sorted out the 1, 9 here. So now I'm going to concentrate here. Maybe this 3, 9 was wrong. Um, the fact is, oh no, I think that looks right. So it must be the 3, 8 that's wrong down here. So I'm carrying on, as I say, maybe I'll be able to come at it from a different angle. It's quite a lesson in being able to kind of fix things on the fly. So now I'm looking at the top. What can I use up here? Well, that 15 has been done. That 31 is effectively already resolved. Now this 14 is made up of, well, this three cells. So with a three in it, the others have to add to 11. 4, 7 is the only remaining possibility. That resolves most of the central cells here. We've got a 2, 9 pair there, so we can put in a 7 here. Um, we don't know. Yes, this 30 
is telling us which of the two nine that is. And this is all working up here. That's good. That means when I get back down to this box where I have the problem, I may be able to get things resolved. And now I've got nine and a one up here. The 14 has told me that which is a nine. And in fact, that one is going to help to resolve these cells here if I was to come to them now, just finishing off the box. <clears throat> so that brings me down here. And if I put a seven and a one in here, that would work for the 16. Oh, no, it wouldn't. This is what my problem is, is I've added one, four, two and seven to make them 16. So one and seven are wrong down here. This should actually be <clears throat> one and nine, I suppose, to go with four and two. Yeah. So the three nine is wrong. So no matter. Yeah, you see, I was reading for some reason. I was reading this six as a five. I've got 19 in the first three cells for this 31. So I was thinking I need another 12. But actually, I needed another 10, which is made up of three seven. So that enables this further corner box to be finished. All the corner boxes are now complete, and really the rest of the puzzle, especially as that largely means that all the clues outside the grid have been used, the rest of the puzzle is just finishing off at this point. So a bit of a mess. I mean, it's a difficult puzzle, and I struggled at first to see how I was meant to be approaching it. But once in the end, I did have some idea of how that was meant to be. First of all, Kind of limiting the grey cells in what they could be. Secondly, using the pairs of row and column clues to give overlaps and gaps. And then finally going back to the clues to work out what they individually spelt out. That's what was needed for this puzzle and luckily able to fix an arithmetic mistake down here and thus complete the puzzle. Um, well done if you did that quicker than me by not making any of the mistakes, for instance, or by spotting the necessary logic early on. Um, it was a very difficult puzzle. So my time there was just over 13 minutes, which, uh, no, sorry, it was just over 19 minutes, which is not terrible for a 13 minute puzzle in this kind of context. And, uh, you know, I could wish that it was quicker, but then I could wish that about a lot of puzzles. So to wrap up the whole Grand Prix, it's taken me basically 140 minutes, two hours and 20 minutes for a test that you get one and a half hours or 90 minutes for. So I'm about 55% over the time. Not one puzzle did I actually beat the par time. Now, as I've said before, I think solving on the software rather than on paper has been a bit of a handicap for me and possibly more than I was expecting at the beginning. But fair enough, you know, it's been an interesting set of puzzles. I hope you've enjoyed solving them along with me when you've attempted them. It's that particular puzzle was a bit of a mind bender in my view, but succumbed to some very sensible logic in the end. Bit of a bit of a tough test. Thank you for following along with me if you have, or welcome to the series if you haven't. Please do subscribe if you're interested in Sudoku and its variants, and I might go back to crosswords next time as well. And uh, thanks very much for staying with us. Hope to see you again soon.